Howdy folks. Today we're going to be looking at the character loading capabilities of the Platformer Pro Game Manager. This allows you to do character selects, it allows you to create multiplayer games, and it allows you to create single player games where the characters can be switched. I've created a new scene called Tutorial Game Manager and added it to the build settings. We now need to do some more setup. First, we're going to create our characters. Let's find the alien prefab and drop it in our scene. Let's break the prefab connection and do a couple of things. First, we're going to take this input out of the character. And let's just use the keyboard input. We'll create two of these. One we will call player one, and one we will call player two. On the player one input, keep the player ID at zero, and we'll change the data to load to player one. Clear preferences, and leave the other settings the same. On the player 2 input, we'll change the data to player 2 and the player ID to 1. Finally, we need to set up a few different controls, so let's use WASD. And for jump, Let's use the return or enter key. We won't worry about changing the other buttons as this is only for a sample. Let's add the game manager now. We'll create a new game object and add the game manager component. We'll turn off persistence as we're not looking at saving and loading in this scene. What we're now going to do is go to our alien character and turn it into a prefab just by dragging it across here. We're now going to duplicate it and we're going to rename it yellow character. To configure the yellow character, let's first change the animation controller. We'll use the yellow alien override that we've already got available. And let's change the default sprite as well. And we'll create a new original prefab. We now have a prefab for the pink character and the prefab for the yellow character. Let's go back to our game manager settings. And we're going to create two correct characters. First one will give an ID of pink, and we'll attach the pink character prefab to the character prefab slot. The second character we'll call yellow, and we'll attach the yellow character prefab to the character prefab slot. Let's now delete the prefabs from our scene and hit save. We need some geometry to walk around, so let's create a tile map. We'll add a tile map collider and we'll do some painting. And maybe we will also just create a respawn point. And we'll find that respawn point and make it the default. So that's where our characters will start. Let's add a camera controller to our camera. And 
For simplicity, let's just choose hard follow. Let's just create some item type data. We just close this window. When we hit play, our pink alien will be respawned and playable. Let's add the test harness to our inspector. And we can now spawn a new character in player position one. Let's use the yellow alien. You see, we now have two characters. It's possible to spawn many more characters, but we haven't configured inputs for those characters. We can use a similar concept to create a character picker seen at the start of the game, which is then used to choose the character with which you will play the game. I've created a scene here with a menu and two items, one for pink character with the select player action and one for the yellow character with the select player action. If I press play, I can choose between the two characters. If I press the pink character, my game starts with the pink character. If I go back and start with the yellow character, my game starts with the yellow character. If you don't wish to use the Platformer Pro menus, then there's simply a function which you can call on the game manager called set character for player, which takes a player ID and a character ID. Another way you can use the game manager's ability to switch characters is to create a single player game which in which one player controls multiple characters, switching control between them. Let's go back to our game scene. What we'll do is disable this second input, we could delete it, and we'll change the player one input to instead apply to all players. Now when we hit play, we can spawn another character And of course they'll move together, but we can use the switch character option to switch input between the players. Of course you can create your own button to do this switch, which can be achieved with the switch character function. Takes a current player ID which will be disabled and a new player ID which will be enabled. That's a quick look at the character loading capabilities of the Platformer Pro Game Manager. Next time we'll look at the persistence capabilities of the Platformer Pro Game Manager. Thanks for watching.